from the JAMA Network. This is JAMA Author Interviews. Conversations with authors exploring the latest clinical research, reviews, and opinion featured in JAMA. Hello, and welcome to this JAMA Author Interview. I'm Dr. Linda Brubaker, Deputy Editor for JAMA. And today we're talking with Dr. Jeffrey Stringer, who is the Division Director and Professor in the Division of Global Women's Health at the University of North Carolina, and also the Assistant Director of the Institute for Global Health and Infectious Diseases. He co-founded and led the Center for Infectious Disease Research in Zambia and lived in Lusaka, Zambia between 2001 and 2012. And today we're going to talk about his work in using an AI-enabled device to assist with gestational age dating. Welcome, Dr. Stringer. Hi, thanks for having me. We'd like to have you just set the stage. Why did you decide to do this work? Why is it important to have this available in low- and middle-income countries? Well, this all started a long time ago. My wife, Elizabeth, and I are both obstetricians, and when we finished our OBGYN training, we moved to Lusaka, Zambia as young professionals where we served on the obstetrics faculty at the University of Zambia. And while working there, it was very apparent to us the limitations of trying to provide high-quality obstetrical care without ultrasound. Ultrasound is a linchpin tool for obstetricians. We use it like a stethoscope. We use it to make all manner of diagnoses. And while there are a few ultrasound machines available to obstetricians in places like Zambia, the vast majority of patients do not have access to these because they're, number one, too expensive to have and maintain, and number two, require experts to do the sonography and obtain the necessary images. So this project came out of a real desire to try to democratize the availability of ultrasound in places like Zambia, where the pregnant patients really needed access to the technology. So the World Health Organization has identified the importance of gestational age dating. Why is this so important and why has this been prioritized on a global level? Well, as obstetricians, almost all manner of obstetrical care is delivered with the gestational age in mind. We use GA to make all sorts of decisions when to deliver a patient with preeclampsia, whether to give corticosteroids for fetal lung maturity, whether to administer neuroprotective magnesium, whether to deliver a patient who's gone post-dates. There are all sorts of clinical decisions that really depend critically on knowledge of gestational age. And so without that, you're really armed only with the physical exam and the patient's report of the last menstrual period, which sometimes is very accurate, but in a very large number of pregnant individuals, this is not a particularly reliable measure of gestational age. And so it really is standard of care in North America and Europe to date all pregnancies with an ultrasound because it's much more accurate. So what are the main findings that you discovered with this project that you did? Our goal was to make ultrasound as accessible as possible. So we built an AI model that allows a novice user to do a series of blindly obtained sweeps across the gravid abdomen, and that gives an answer to the gestational age or gives you a gestational age estimate that is as accurate as a uh, trained sonographer using a high-specification machine. And when you say blind sweeps, you mean following a protocol of going up and down and across in an organized fashion according to the study protocol. Is that what you mean by blind sweeps? That's right. We defined a specific protocol where there are five, or depending on how far along in gestation the patient is, and this is measured by simply the so-called symphysis fundal height. You make a measurement of that in centimeters through a physical exam, and then the software sets how many sweeps need to be obtained. So depending on how far along the patient is, there are either four or five sweeps in the craniocaudal orientation, meaning up and down, and then four or five sweeps in the lateral direction, meaning crosswise. So these are 10-second sweeps that are done and collected as little video clips that are fed into the AI software. And was this technique suitable for doing the gestational age dating? Yeah, it performed incredibly well. So it works as well as a trained sonographer doing standard ultrasound biometry on a high-specification machine. So it's statistically equivalent in the diagnostic accuracy study that we performed. And what are the limitations? Was this done in a select population or all comers? 
We did it in a general population, both in Lusaka and in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. But we did exclude certain kinds of patients. So patients who had a BMI more than 40, we excluded. And those with known fetal anomalies that would have been obvious at the time of enrollment, we excluded. But other than that, it's a very generalized population, and we have a fair amount of confidence that this works in a general population. So this is going to be a very, very helpful step forward. Obviously, there are still significant issues that have to be brought to bear to get high-quality obstetric care in low- and middle-income settings, but this is an important step forward. What will be the next steps to roll this technology out or further validate this work? I think that there is a fair amount of work to be done to convince decision makers and policy makers that this sort of technology can be relied upon. So if you think about what we're proposing here and what the study did, it does not require a trained sonographer to navigate their way to known fetal structures and then measure them. And there's a little bit of blind faith that's happening where the the algorithm picks up the features of the ultrasound through these sweeps and interprets them in a way that is different than we have traditionally done that. And so I think that it's going to require further implementation and validation studies in order for the World Health Organization, the decision makers in countries like Zambia, to put full faith in the accuracy of this tool. Although I think from the publications that we've done so far, and from particularly this randomized diagnostic accuracy study, I think that we're well on the way to validating that this is a technology that's ready for widespread implementation. So clinicians and policymakers and payers have both excitement about AI as it works its way into clinical medicine, but also some apprehension and concern. Are there any concerns that patients should be thinking about with this technology, with AI help? Sometimes I like to make the distinction between this kind of AI and the large language model chat GPT type of AI that's sort of in the news right now. This is a little bit more limited in that it takes images and interprets them in a very specific way. It, it's not as susceptible to the kind of biases and context that I think large language models might be. What we found is that the AI learns exactly what you ask it to learn and nothing, nothing more or nothing less. So I think as long as these models that use computer vision, this particular technology, are trained on a representative population that represents the population that you would actually be using the technology in, I think we're on pretty solid ground. Were there any surprises that you found in this study? Any things that caught you by surprise? Yes, there are several of those. So one thing that I really find fascinating about this is that the model is not just copying what a sonographer would do. It is looking at all manner of features in the images that we don't normally measure or investigate. So for instance, if you were to go through a set of these blindly obtained sweeps and look for clinically meaningful images, you may or may not find those images in those sweeps. So typically to do fetal biometry to measure gestational age, we obtain very specific views of the head, abdomen, and femur. We measure those views. We then take those measurements and put them into one of many published formulas to get the gestational age. Those particular views are often, if not in the majority of cases, absent from the blind sweeps that we're obtaining. And I think that this is interesting because it allows the model or it's certain to me that the model is looking at things that we don't typically look at. And it is more accurate at estimating gestational age, especially later in gestation than our traditional methods are, and particularly in fetuses that may be large for gestational age or growth restricted. Well, thank you very much. I'm Dr. Linda Brubaker, and I've been speaking with Dr. Jeffrey Stringer. You can find a link to the article in this episode's description. To follow this and other JAMA Network podcasts, please visit us online at jamanetworkaudio.com or search for JAMA Network wherever you find your podcasts. This episode was produced by Daniel Morrow at the JAMA Network. Thanks for listening.